from previous Hoopa conferences. Um, we had a, a Pechachka in Slovenia last year. I think me and you were the only ones who did it, weren't we? And then we <laughs> so we have six tonight, which is great. Uh, Sandra on Generation Z. <coughs> Today I want to share some of the thoughts about Generation Z. Those are the people you see every day, you try to teach them, and there are some things that I've never been able to understand. Like, you weren't downloaded. Sometimes you try to teach them things and you think, where did these people come from? I mean, and before I start saying anything, I have to say, I, mean, I am not old. I refuse <laughs> to think of myself as old, but sometimes when I see them, it's you know, something somewhere must have gone wrong in the process. I'm not sure what exactly. And in so many ways, they amaze me every day. Uh, so even if there is a risk that I sound like my grandmother, you know, when I was their age, and I, don't, I didn't say when I was young, because I'm still young. But when I was their age, everything was different. And today, you know, they, they are just born with their telephones, and sometimes they're so attached to them that it feels they feel real pain if you want to uh, if you want them to put them away and you know listen to you for a second. Sometimes I feel like a dinosaur or at least an endangered species. And in a way we are, you know, in those times, who cared whether I'm auditive, visual, whatever? Nobody. <laughs> so that makes our credibility really to zero. Now, how could they trust us if our information, our information, if we are using technology like chalk? And you have to understand them here. <laughs> and the moment you need them to help you set up anything, the moment you need to ask them for help, you know, they know you are inferior. And you just can't compete with them anymore. So who are we to expect them to listen to us? I mean, <laughs> to claim their time and energy. And sometimes I really wonder how come there are so many. <laughs> <laughs> more and more of those. You know, there are students who actually ask me, and this has happened not only once, does sleeping count as a hobby? And I say, no, sleeping is not a hobby. It will never be. <laughs> you know, it sounds odd that you have to explain that to them. Yeah, of course, I still remember the time when we thought that we knew things and that we thought we, we actually invented things and that adults just didn't know. And we tried to rebel by, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we thought we knew everything, or that at least that we knew enough. Now, when you get older, you know you don't know enough. <laughs> Whereas today, yeah, we often get this. No. I forgot to make a, a backup copy of my brain, so everything is lost. And I said, well, we did that last week, so how, where did it go? We just vanished into it. Yeah. So where exactly, um, have you ever seen what they do in their free time? Have you ever seen them do their Facebook things? Oh, God. Sometimes I am speechless. <coughs> Where exactly this will lead, I'm not really sure. Where will they find employers willing to ignore all the stupid things they post on their Facebook? <laughs> and even as a parent, you know, can you really do anything? <laughs> Don't smoke and they go out and smoke. You say, no, don't sit at the computer and just, just 
They just don't get yes, no, that's all yes to them. <laughs> and it doesn't really need <laughs> Raising teenagers is like nailing jelly to a tree. All mothers here will know the problem. <laughs> so what can we do except <laughs> put this on the door? <laughs> So